Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to see about triggers in Azure Data Factory. So firstly, let's see what is a trigger. A trigger in Azure Data Factory is a mechanism that starts an Azure Data Factory pipeline automatically at a specified time or when a specific event occurs. So what it means is, for example, if you create a pipeline in Azure Data Factory, you can run the pipeline in two ways. Either you can trigger the pipeline manually or you can set up a trigger so that it can run the pipeline in an automatic way. In Azure Data Factory, there are different types of triggers. So let's see what are those types. So firstly, we have scheduled trigger, and then we have storage events trigger, and the other type is stumbling window trigger. And finally, there is also a custom triggers where you can specify the triggers based on your requirements. And in today's video, we are going to see about the scheduled trigger, and we can explore all the other types of triggers in the subsequent videos. Cool, so what is a schedule trigger? This trigger runs a pipeline on a specific schedule, such as hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. So basically what it means is you can schedule a pipeline, say for example, to run the pipeline every day, or you can also schedule a pipeline to run twice every day, or monthly once, or weekly once, those kind of things. So basically it's kind of scheduling the pipelines using triggers. So you can configure this trigger using the Azure Data Factory Studio. Cool, now let's see how we can configure a schedule trigger using Azure Data Factory Studio with a demo. Without wasting further time, let's jump into the Azure portal and see how we can do it. As you can see here, I'm in the Azure portal. So in the last video, we have created a simple copy data pipeline from scratch to copy a CSV file from the source storage account, which is data lake, and copy the CSV file to the destination data lake. As you can see here, I have opened a separate tab, uh, which is a source data lake. So this is the file that we copied in the last video. So from the source container in the source data lake. And we copied this file uh, to this destination data lake inside the destination container. So we did this using the Azure Data Factory pipeline. As you can see here, this is the Azure Data Factory Studio. So if I expand this, go to the author tab and expand the pipelines. So this is the pipelines that we have created in the last video. So if you haven't watched that video, please do watch it so that you can get an idea about like how to create your pipelines and stuff. Cool, so in the last video, after we created this pipeline, we ran this pipeline using this option, which is debug. So this is basically to run this pipeline uh, to just test our functionalities and stuff. As you can see here, there is another option called add trigger. So we can set up all these triggers that we discussed before using this option over here. So before actually configuring this trigger, we have to do one additional step. So what it is is, for example, in the last video, we have used this copy data activity to copy the data from the source to the destination. Whereas in the source, so if I go to the source and we have specified the source data set. So if I click on this open, uh, as you can see here, we have specified the sample CSV file over here. So using this browse option. So what I'm going to do is, um, since to test this uh, schedule trigger functionality, I'm going to upload a new file in the source container so that after setting up the trigger in the Azure Data Factory, we can easily check or test if it is working fine. Just checking if it is able to copy the new files in so that we are not going to worry about the old files. So what I'm going to do is, there is an option called upload over here. So if I'm clicking on this and I have a sample CSV file, so as you can see here, I have created a file called schedule trigger. So I'm going to use this file to upload in the source. So after dragging and dropping the files, I'm going to click on this upload option to upload the files. As you can see here, now this schedule trigger.csv has been uploaded onto the source data lake. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this source data set. So I'm going to change the sample CSV file to the new file that we have uploaded now. So I'm going to click on this browse option and I'm just going inside the source directory and going to click on this new file that we have uploaded, which is schedule trigger.csv. Cool, so now this pipeline has been modified to copy that new file. So in the destination, right now we don't have the file that we have uploaded. So when we actually set up the trigger, we would be expecting to see uh, the new file copied from the source data lake. So for that, let's now configure the trigger. So to configure the new trigger, what we can do is, I'm going to click on this add trigger option over here. So I'm going to click on this and there are two options over here. One is trigger now and other one is new slash edit. So this trigger now is kind of similar to this debug option over here. So what it will do is like, if you click on this button over here, it will run the pipeline once, but we don't want to run this pipeline once. Uh, we have to schedule the pipeline basis of a trigger so that 
it will be running every time. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this new slash edit button over here. The first option is there is a drop down to choose the triggers. So if I click on this, I don't have any existing trigger, so I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to click this new button over here. Cool. So now we have this options to actually create a new trigger. So the first option is it is asking for the name. So what we can do is we can give a name called scheduled underscore trigger. Okay, so after giving the name, the next option is the description. You can give any kind of description to it. So this is an optional thing. I'm going to skip for this demo. And the next thing is the type of the trigger. So this is the most important thing. As you can see here, the schedule type trigger has been selected default. So what I'm going to do is if I'm clicking this drop down over here, so you can see what are the different types of triggers available in Azure Data Factory. So in this demo, we are going to go with the schedule trigger. So I'm going to click on this. And after choosing the type, the next option is the start date. So this start date is just the start time of the trigger that we are creating. So as you can see here, the time that you're trying to create this trigger uh, will be selected as a default. Uh, so I'm going to go with this default option. I'm not going to change it. Cool. So now the next option is selecting the time zone. So this is one of the most important thing. Since we are dealing with the times and the dates of the triggers that we are going to run this pipeline. So we need to specify in which time zone this pipeline should run on that particular time. So by default, this UTC time has been selected. So what you can do is you can click on this drop down option over here and change the time zone of your location. So since I'm located in New Zealand, I'm going to choose Auckland, Wellington. So Auckland is one of the cities in New Zealand. So I'm going to click on this option, which will give me the New Zealand time. Cool. So now we have selected the time zone. The next option is the recurrence. So recurrence is just to specify how many times the pipeline should run. As you can see here, we have a drop down option over here. So if I'm clicking on this, you can change these settings based on minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. So I'm going to go with this minutes option so that it will be quicker and easy to demo. So I'll choose minutes. As you can see here in the left side, we have the numbers over here. So what it means by this is like, for example, if you create a trigger using this option, this pipeline will be running every 15 minutes. So I can change this number as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to two minutes so that it will be very easy to demo. Cool, so now after creating this trigger, the pipeline will be running every two minutes. We have given the recurrence option and the next thing is specifying the end date. So for example, if you want to make this trigger to be disabled after a certain point in time, you can specify an end date over here. So I'm not going to do that uh, for now. So I'm just going with the default option over here. And the next option is the annotation. So this is also another optional thing just to give more information about the triggers and stuff. So I'm not going to change anything over here as well. And the final step is specifying the start trigger. So this is very important. So as you can see here, the default is checked, uh, which means that once you create this trigger and publish the changes, so this trigger gets active so that you can expect the pipeline to get triggered after two minutes when you actually publish it. So I'm just going to select this option, which is the default one. And now, as you can see here, we have given all the information necessary to create a trigger. So I'm going to click OK over here. And the next option, it is asking about the parameters. So we did not specify any parameters and stuff. Uh, so we don't have to worry about this. This video is just about the functionality of the trigger. So we can explore about these parameters and stuff in the future videos. So you can just ignore that and we can go ahead and click OK. Cool. So now we have created the trigger. So as you can see here, now this pipeline is associated with the trigger that we have created. So in order to save all the changes, we need to publish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this publish all button over here and you can see what are the new changes that you have done. The first one is like we have changed the data sets configuration, uh, changing from the old CSV file to the new CSV file that we have uploaded. And also we have created the new triggers, which is a schedule underscore trigger. So once you're happy about this, you can click on this publish button over here to save all your changes. Cool, so now the changes have been published. So what you can do now is you can go to this monitor tab in the left side. So if I'm going to click on this monitor tab and under the pipeline runs, so you can wait for another two minutes to check if the pipeline has been triggered automatically. So now the time is 12.20. Maybe in another two minutes, the pipeline will be showing over here. Cool, now the time is 12.21. And yeah, so as you can see here, the pipeline has been started. So let's refresh it again. 
So as you can see here, the pipeline has run successfully. You can check the pipeline name and the duration. It took just the 12 seconds to copy the new files that we have uploaded. And this is an interesting thing. Uh, you can see which trigger is actually uh, triggering this pipeline. You can see the name, which is pretty helpful. And also you can see the status which has been succeeded. So what you can do now is uh, you can go to the destination storage account. And if you click on refresh over here, as you can see here, you can see the new files, which is scheduled underscore trigger, which is same like what we have uploaded in the source. So our pipeline has ran successfully and copied this file. So what we can do now is we can wait for another two minutes. So as you can see here, it has started exactly around 1221. So since we have uh, configured like two minutes, in another two minutes, the same pipeline will run again. So some somewhere around 1223 AM. So as you can see here in the destination storage account, you can see the modified time is 1221. So when the pipeline runs again, it will try to copy the same file and we'll be expecting this modified uh, date to be changed to 1223 from 1221. Let's see if it is working fine or not. Okay, it's now 1223 AM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh. As you can see here, the pipeline has been triggered now automatically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit refresh. As you can see here, the pipeline has been successful now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the destination storage account. So if I hit refresh, this modified uh, daytime should be changed. Cool, as you can see here, the modified daytime has been changed to 12.23 AM. Cool, so now we have set up the pipeline with the schedule trigger. So this pipeline will run every two minutes for now. So another way to monitor this trigger runs is, for example, in the monitor tab, we are in the inside the pipeline runs, and there is an option called trigger runs, which is more specific to only the trigger runs of the pipeline. As you can see here, you have the information about the trigger runs, and also it has a different kind of categories based on the types. So we have scheduled tumbling, storage, and custom triggers. So we have just created the scheduled trigger, so you can see all the information under the scheduled trigger. And we haven't created the, created the tumbling window trigger or storage event or custom events. So when you actually create the trigger specific to these types, you can see all these logs specific to that type, which is really cool. After creating the trigger, you can manage the triggers under the Manage tab. So for example, if I go to the Manage tab on the left side, so there is an option called Triggers over here. So if you click on this, you can see the trigger that we have created and the status is started, which is which means that it is active. And you can also stop the trigger over here or, or delete the triggers from here. So I'm going to stop this trigger so that the pipeline doesn't run for every two minutes. So I'm going to just stop for it. Uh, we have tested the functionality, it's working fine. So I'm just going to stop it and going to publish all the changes. Cool, so now I think you have an idea about like how to create a scheduled trigger. And in the next video, let's explore about the storage event triggers. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And see you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.